Hey everybody, welcome to the video. And here today, I'm going to show you how to determine whether your Nintendo Switch is hackable or can be modded or not. This is a definitive method, so you'll definitely get an either yes or a no following these steps. Now, there are places that have put up charts like this one over at GBA 10, but I'll put a link in the description where they list a wide range of different serials. They show the first four characters of the serials here, as so, okay? And then basically, if your switch falls within any of these green ranges of serial numbers, then you're pretty much good to go. If it falls in the red range, unfortunately, then the switch has been patched and cannot be hacked. But there's quite a few out there that fall in this orange zone where it's not definite whether the switch has been patched or not. So there's a possibility, even though it falls in this range, that it can still be modded. And so this is a way to definitely find out if it can or cannot. Now there's different ways of doing this, but this method I'm going to show you here today has three advantages. So the first advantage is that this isn't going to alter anything in your switch so you don't have to worry about game saves disappearing or your settings getting you know reset or everything being reset to factory it leaves everything in the switch just the way it is and that's another advantage there's no residue that's left behind meaning that this is not going to look like you ran a homebrew or anything like that when you're done it's still going to look like a regular factory switch whether it's a modded version or not and the last advantage is that there's really no chance at all for you to ruin or brick your system as long as you get the files from where i'm going to show you whether it's a hackable version or not there is no chance that you're going to end up bricking or ruining uh, the switch beyond repair. It's pretty much safe. All right, so moving on to the list of things you will need. You will need a PC in order to be able to do this. You will also need a USB to type C cable so you can connect your switch to the PC. Just make sure it's a good one that works. Also, you will need some type of jig so we can put um, our switch into RCM mode. I strongly suggest that you get a good one if you don't have one, maybe off of Amazon or eBay, one that's high rated, something similar to these. You don't need two, you just need one. Now, technically, you can use the paper clip method, but I definitely don't endorse that in any way. And then, lastly, what you will need to download and get is the Tegra RCM GUI. As you can see here at the GitHub page, just download the latest version, which as of right now is 2.6. You can either run the installer or the portable. I always run the portable. You can run that one straight from a folder on your desktop. It doesn't install anything. You can even run it from a USB. So that's what I recommend. They both work equally the same and have the exact same features and everything. So use whichever one you like. So now go ahead and connect the USB part of the cable to your PC and then connect the other part to the switch. Your PC should make the little confirmation noise letting you know that it's been connected. It may need to look for and install drivers and you may get a prompt down in the lower right hand uh, side of your monitor. If you do, just let it do its thing and let it finish until it says it's installed it. Whether it's been successful or not, don't worry about it. Just let it finish. Let it do its thing. At this point, go ahead and hold down the power button on your switch so you can completely power it down. Remember, don't put it into sleep mode. You need to completely power it off. Once you've done that, then you can go ahead and take your jig and insert it into the right rail of the switch. Once it's in there, go ahead and set the switch down. Make sure that you continue to keep it connected to the PC. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and take care of the software part. 
go ahead and install the Tegra RCMG UI. If you got the installer version, if not, and you got the portable version like I did here, just open up the zip. Let's drag the folder out to the desktop, right? And then once we've done that, let's go ahead and go into the folder. We're gonna go into tools, and then we're gonna grab this bizkey dump underscore USB bin file. Let's make a copy of it. Let's go back out here to the folder and then let's just paste it right there. Now, once we've gone ahead and done that, we need to open up the command window here in this folder. Okay, so now what we need to do is open up the command prompt uh, to this folder. Depending on the Windows version you're using, this will differ. If you're using, for example, Windows 7, this is really easy. Just hold down the Shift key, and while you're holding it down, press the right button on your mouse, and a window like this will open up, and it should say Open Up Command Prompt here or Command Window here, something to that effect. So go ahead and click that. Here in Windows 10, I've tried using the PowerShell uh, with this method, and it doesn't work. I actually need the command window itself. So for Windows 10, we when we have the folder here open, we need to come up here, just click anywhere in the open space up here, and it should highlight the whole location of this folder. Click the or hit the backspace button so everything deletes, and then type CMD and press enter, and this will open up the command window right here to this folder. Now that we're there, let's go ahead and launch Tegra RCMGUI.exe. When you open it up, make sure that there is no payload in this box. If there is, just click on it, hit backspace uh, until it's been completely cleared. Then go ahead and click on settings. I would recommend that at least for now, you have these three boxes unchecked. Click on install drivers, click yes, just hit yes here. Okay, and then once this pops up, just hit next. And then you will see this um, verbiage down here, which says the lib USB K Nintendo Switch is ready to use with the green check mark. And once you see that, click on finish. Now that you have that set up, let's click back here to payload and let's move on to the next step. Okay, so now that we have all this sorted out, we still have our um, switch connected to our PC. It's completely been turned off. The jig should be in it. And now we're going to put it in RCM mode. You just need to hold the volume plus button and the power button down at the same time. I recommend that you hold them only until you hear the little confirmation chime or whatever it's called come out on your PC. Once you hear that noise that the switch has been connected, immediately let go of both buttons. And then this here should say, I think RCM OK, and the box should turn green. Now, if you hold the buttons too long, that little chime may happen two times, and you may not see this here in green. It may stay red. I'll tell you what to do here in just a little bit if that happens. So let me go ahead and go over to my switch. I'm going to put it into RCM mode. As you can see, it only made that little sound once. And here is the RCM OK. So everything is good up to this point. All right, so if you happen to hold the buttons too long and you hear a second chime or a second confirmation or whatever, and you let go of the buttons and this is still red, you'll have to do the process with the switch on the switch end all over again, meaning disconnect it from the PC, hold down the power button up to 15 seconds until you see the Nintendo logo pop up on the screen, then you can let it go. Once it takes you back to the home screen on the switch, you can then go ahead, reconnect it back to the PC. Once it's been connected back to the PC and you get the little confirmation chime, then turn it off completely, just like you did earlier. Make sure the jig is on the right hand side, keep it connected, to the PC and then try to put it into RCM mode again. The Tegra stuff that we did and the stuff with the command prompts and all that, all of this, you don't have to do all of that all over again, just the switch portion of it. 
Okay, so now with all of that done, you're gonna go to your command prompt and you're gonna type exactly what I'm going to show you on the screen. I will put that down in the description. I'll also put a zip file so you can download just the basic instructions by themselves if you want to use that as well. Once you've typed that into your command window here, then just type enter, okay? And then what you're gonna get is something like this. It may not look exactly like this, but it'll look something like this. What you're looking for here is the line that says smash the stack with, and I'll, I'll put that up on the screen and there'll be a set of numbers there. It'll be a zero X and then either zero, 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 or a seven followed by three zeros. If that is a seven after the X, then that means your system is completely hackable. If it's a zero after the X, then that means the system is not hackable. Now, sometimes when the system is hackable, you will also get not only just that number seven will pop up, but also on the screen of your switch, you might see like a little smiley face GIF along with some data on top. Don't worry about it. If you get that, that just indicates that your system is, of course, a moddable system. That does not mean anything is in the switch. It doesn't mean like a homebrew was sent to your switch or anything like that. Your switch will still stay just like factory, even though you see the little smiley face GIF on there. Don't worry about it. Um, that's it. Once you've confirmed whether your switch is hackable or not, you can disconnect it from the PC, hold down the power button 10 to 15 seconds until you see the switch logo come up and then let it go. You'll be back at your home screen and everything will be back to normal. And from that point forward, you can do whatever it is you want with your switch. Well, that wraps it up for this video, guys. You know I appreciate you all watching. And if you learned anything here or found anything informative, useful, helpful, or you just want to throw some love or appreciation to the channel, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Much love going out to all of you out there. It's a crazy world. Please be careful. Till next time, take care.